Okay, so what we have here is a positive plate and a negative plate, and between them there is a uniform field that is created by the charges on those plates, and it points in this direction, and it's the same everywhere between those plates. Now, if we want to describe the change in potential between point A oops, and point B, That is equal to the negative work done in moving a charge from A to B divided by the actual quantity of that charge. In this situation, if we moved a positive charge from A to B, we would be increasing its potential and increasing, therefore, its potential energy. So it makes sense that the work we do to move it there would involve pushing it against the uh, the electrostatic force that's trying to push it the other way. Now I'm going to manipulate this equation a little bit. We know that work is force times distance. And this work is the work done by the electric field E. So this F that I've just put in the equation is the the electrostatic force. And we can further modify this. We know that force is field times charge. So we replace force with field times charge and we get this. And we can cancel the Q's. And we get that. And here's the little trick I'm going to do. The point of this video is to come up with an equation for the potential at any given point. What we have here is the change in potential between point A to point B. So it's the change in potential as we go from point A to point B. So what if we were to say, well, point A is the point where the potential equals zero. The potential would equal zero here right between the two plates. Uh, it, it doesn't have to because we can assign potential to be zero anywhere we want, but the convention is that potential is zero an infinite distance away. And this assignment of zero between the plates is consistent with that because this line can go to infinity and the potential will still be zero on it if you get infinity away. So when we call point A to be at this location where there's zero potential, uh, VA becomes zero, and this is VB minus zero, which is just VB equals negative ED. So this is an equation uh, in, in which the distance is the distance from a point where the potential is zero. And what I really want to do is keep working here and go to a situation where the field is not uniform. Uh, and this, this equation here only works for when you have a uniform field or when you know the average field over that distance. So now I'm going to start showing what I really want to show. And I'm going to take this equation that we just found and I'm going to change the D for distance to an X because that's more familiar to us and we're gonna think about the situation where the potential is due to a point charge we were thinking about it where the potential was due to uh, plates of charge if we have a point charge it's going to create a field that is strong near the charge but tapers off and gets weaker as you get farther from it until eventually at an infinite distance away the field is essentially zero so in the previous example we started at a point where the field or, or I mean the uh, potential was zero and here uh, the potential 
is you know conventionally defined to be zero at an infinite distance from the uh, point charge. So our zero potential point corresponds to the, the field being about zero at an infinite distance. Let's look at a graph of field versus distance x from the point charge. So this, this x is distance from the point charge. So if we start here at like x is almost zero, that's like at the point charge. And you'd have like almost an infinite field if it's a very concentrated point, like literally just a point, infinitesimally small of charge. And that field would decrease like this until it gets an infinite distance away and it goes down to about zero. What we want to solve for is the potential at a point R, R distance from the point charge. So here's how we have to think about it. We have to think about it as we're starting an infinite distance away where the potential is zero and as we get closer, as we go to the left and we get closer to R, we are adding potential. And as we go all the way from infinity to R, the potential that we add is equal to the area under the graph up to that point, the point where R is. And when you, when you have some quantity being the area under a graph, you know you have an integral going on. So what we have here is the potential is the integral from infinity, because we're starting at potential zero at infinity, going to uh, a distance r away from the point charge. So this would be an integral uh, negative field dx. And we can rewrite this differently because we already know the equation for field due to a point charge which is uh, k times the point charge oops not sigma q that um, that charge is uh, q divided by the distance x from the uh, point charge q that distance x squared. So our equation has evolved. So at this point, let me just remind you of this handy basic integration rule. And let's try to put our equation in the form of x to the something. We can uh, yank out the negative k and q because they're constants and we know that 1 over x squared is the same as x to the negative 2 so our n here is negative 2 alright take a look at the equation we have now and I'm going to use that rule to do the uh, integral our n plus 1, since n is negative 2, our n plus 1 is uh, negative 1. So that's where this negative sign comes from there. And we can rewrite this as um, a positive, because our two minus signs cancel. Positive kq over x. Our last step is to uh, plug in r for x and then subtract when we plug in infinity for x. So kq over r minus kq over infinity ish is our, our answer. But if this term is divided by infinity, it's zero. So basically kq over r minus 0 is kq over r, and that is our answer. Where q is the magnitude of the charge in coulombs, r is the distance from that point charge in meters. Made with DoodleCast Pro.